Well, first let me say, you know, that that's a very good Ohio State team, and they uh, have done a hell of a job with them. I think uh, Wesson is developing into one of the great centers in our league. Um, I thought our experience uh, helped a little bit in the second half. I was very disappointed in the first half defensively. I thought we were a joke. And uh, we just did not cover. Um, loose balls, long rebounds, they got everything. And that is intolerable for me. I thought offensively, you know, we had some good shots. They did a good job. I had no problems with our offense. But our defense, we talked a lot this week, defense travels. And the problem is when, you know, when you start shooting threes and scoring 80 points a game, you think you can win it a different way. You don't win in this league on the road without your defense. And uh, so I was, you know, disappointed. Told Cash at halftime, and boy, it's really fun in this job because there's not a lot of things that are, but what really is fun in this job is when you see guys grow and you see guys get better at something. When you challenge people and those people respond, that's probably the most satisfying part of my job. And Cash has done an unbelievable job this second half. I thought both Kyle and, and Matt McQuaid, who struggled early, and Nick was solid the whole game. And that's the other guy that grew a lot. We all know it was a disaster down here for him last year. Uh, partially because they were really good, partially because he let things get to him, and that maturity is uh, makes me feel good about him. So I was really happy with the job he did. We had some other guys like Aaron Henry, who was absent in the first half, did a much better job the second. But in general, that's a good basketball team that uh, was a physical game. It was a good game, I guess, for TV. And yet, uh, we got to play better if we're going to get to where we think we got to get. And I'm sure Chris feels the same way about it. Tom, there was a last year, you got a similar kind of run, like the first half, where it flips. Yeah. And yet, there was not there was a boy who was through in the second half. Is that what you learned about the first time? There was. And, 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 and I'm going to be honest with you. Halftime wasn't a lot of fun this time. Because I just, the effort-related things, when that ball bounces on the floor at the free throw line and nobody gets it, when we we got a scouting report that tells you who goes right and who goes left. So, you know, I felt comfortable at halftime because I didn't see us like, oh, the rough cave did. But I felt disappointed because, um, you know, the, the lack of Josh we really saw today because he's become a much better leader. And that's what Cash is. I mean, Let's face it, I'm trying to have cash just do everything, coach the team, drive the airplane, hell of a deal. But uh, yeah, it was better. We, we responded, that's a big key, but why did we let it get to that point as far as that goes? Now they played, they missed some shots too, so it's it's not nothing against them, it's just we didn't do the things we're supposed to do in the first time. I was talking a lot about making a lot of people. Do you like you have to feel like you You know, and Nick was solid and went to it late, uh, got guys in foul trouble. I thought we punched it in there pretty well. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> there is a process to that. I use that word about a hundred times, you know. And sometimes, you think back a year ago, when I had a lot of people questioning me about Rutgers and what goes on, you know. Um, I tell Nick, trust me. I tell people you got to trust the system, and uh, this is the way it's supposed to be. You know, there's a couple of schools that make it so every freshman just this way at the beginning, but 90% of these schools you grow just like Diop last year. You know, that kid grew in this program and got better and did an unbelievable job. Nick Ward is is heading in that direction. My only question is to you guys: you know, we're not a better team than last year. Don't kid yourself. Can you become one? Maybe. I think part of that talk, too, which is kids can't handle this stuff anymore. So I'm going to keep coaching, you keep writing, and, and hopefully they'll keep playing. Well, when you look at this game without Josh Rokuda, I think biggest win of the season for you guys, when you talk about this start to the Big Ten final. You know, it's, it's great because we beat a quality, quality team. You know, I thought we beat a good team in Rutgers. They had just beaten Miami. And, you know, they fell off a little bit, but Ohio State is. 
not only a quality team, but very, very well coached. And, you know, we kept using the term the last three days, one of the more solid teams we played. play. You know, some teams are high flying and can do this. Some teams are great defense. Some teams, they are solid in just about every area, which is a great tribute to Chris. And, uh, but I'd say in general, um, any time you get a road win, you know, you know, other years I'd say any time you get a road win, somebody asked me how the win against Northwestern was. I said it was great. Because any time you get a win in this league right now, it's something. If you get a ro road win, it's frosting on the cake just because of how difficult the league is. The place was hopping today. It was great. Coach, can you talk about uh, kind of a throwback battle of the East out there with West and Jake? I was kind of throwback, and I, you know, I thought it was physical both ways, and um, that kid's going to be a good player. I think he's only a sophomore. He's a young sophomore. I, I really like Wesson, but you know what? I'm really starting to like my guy because he's listening. He's he's getting better. He's staying focused on the task at hand and what he's got to do. And uh, so I, I love Wesson, but but I love Nick Ward uh, a little more. You know, I just thought Cash was, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to explain, but it, it's sometimes, I told him he needs me on his shoulder, like one of them little devils that are on your shoulder, you know, with a fork, you know, that's what he needs for me. If I shrink a little more, I just stay there. Because, as I told him, you know, you don't know what you're doing when you're playing. Because the hardest thing in the world is to self-evaluate. And, and that's why you need a coach, but sometimes, you know, like hearing it from the coach. I mean, I, I told him early on, I I kept my composure really well. And uh, right before the half, that, that was inexcusable what we did. And, uh, you know, give up a three, give up a layup, throw the ball away, give up another three. Um, we played enough of last year's film that they should know better. And, but, you know what, Cash is not only took it, but he built on it. And that, that's really cool. Uh, Kyle uh, had a pretty impacting game. Talk a little bit about the move he made to, to break that, or to put you guys back ahead with the dunk, and, and just the emotion of seeing him and Kenny, you know, those, those bench guys kind of contribute like they did. Well, yeah, right now, he's not a bench guy, but you're right. I mean, he's been a bench guy. And, I mean, this was a big game for him, too. I mean, you know, not only is he in Ohio, but he's got his brother on the other team. And his, where parents said, you know, Buckeye sweaters and Spartan underwear and somebody else's hat. I don't know, you know, it's a hell of a deal. It's a tough deal for them, but it meant a lot to him. And uh, I just love the way those guys rallied around those two guys. And, um, you know, I thought Kenny did some really good things, but I thought first half, too, he just missing some easy shots and, and we were over helping. We just did some things, but Kyle Arms that dunk. And then the offensive rebound might have been two of the biggest key plays in the game. Uh, Aaron Henry, Lady being helped. It's a pretty critical minute. How important is that his continued kind of maturation here? Well, they're really big, you know. And <coughs> excuse me. Maybe what happens with Josh and how long he's out, uh, they become more and more important. So we'll get bound. But, you know, I'm just happy we got him some minutes earlier in the year. And so this isn't a foreign soil and yet going on the road in the Big Ten is different than going on the road at Louisville or Florida. Um, it's just different. But I think the fact that we've been on the road in some pretty good places helped this team and I think it helped their freshmen a little bit. We talked to them about that, the difference with a Big Ten game and how we had that five point lead and just two free throws and all of a sudden it's back to one, you know. Um, those are learning things that uh, seem to happen more in the Big Ten. Yeah, I don't I mean, the only update I have is the, you know, the future is a lot brighter than it was. I and mean, they weren't sure if it was a, not a stress fracture because it's not in that area. But and it, it, there didn't seem to be any break or anything. But those things and where it was could be, uh, you know, a very long time or not. And I think what they did is they, they did something to them. And they'll see in the next two weeks, we should have a clearer idea whether he responds to a little treatment or whether he doesn't. But I feel a little more comfortable today that he's going to respond to that treatment. But I also feel he's going to miss a little time yet. What has been the most pleasing thing for you over this 18 stretch year? 
you know, I, I think uh, I'm trusting my team and they're trusting me. You know, that's the most pleasing thing. Yeah. He, there's certain wins that are big wins, and there's certain wins that we talk a lot in those huddles at the end. Well, finish, and finish, and finish, and finish. And uh, I think that's really critical, you know. And uh, we made that turnover. I, I don't know. I, I, I've never seen anything like that happen. We step out of bounds, throwing the inbounds pass in. I mean, and that was, you know, just ridiculous. But so. The good news is we got a lot of work to do to get better and to get good enough to be a real, real contender for something here. But when you do that and you struggle and you still win, it gives a lot more teaching on this level and it's encouraging for me. Uh, uh, time for two more. Five, with Kyle. In the second half, 76.5 from the field, 45 from three. Are you getting back to the help? Because, you know, here, we're back to not being able to see here. Or do they just start making them? Um, you know, I thought our break got a little better. We got some things off that. We put and cast in a few more ball screens. We got something out of that. We got a few backdoor plays. Arnie got a big one. Um, I thought we, we didn't settle for threes as much, but the threes were pretty good shots. I don't know, it was probably a variety of reasons, but I'd say the biggest reason is um, my, my brain, my brain guy, you know, my cash is, he just played so much smoother. And I don't know how many assists did he have? I don't know, five. Five? Well. He, you know, he played a lot better than five assists because sometimes he had a hockey assist or he put guys in the right position. And I just thought he was a big, big difference, even though the back cuts and all the things. He and Nick, um, you know, two best players. Now that Josh are supposed to play well for you, especially on the road, my two guys did. With Kyle and Nick getting knocked out a little bit, um, any concern with them? Or they obviously well, I guess hurt his ankle a little bit. I didn't even know. I didn't even see it. I didn't even know. I'm kind of oblivious to those things. And if it's an injury, I, I try not to pay any attention. But uh, Nick, no, nah, no worry about Nick. You know, the one area that he can't hurt is that cranial. That thing ain't getting hurt. He might hurt some other areas, but that thing ain't getting hurt. And, I mean, he, when I went out there, I said, okay, he popped right up. And, and he said, yeah, you know, he just got hit in the head, and he got hit, I think, on one of his arms when he hit the floor. But uh, Nick's, Nick's a tough kid, and uh, so I'm not worried. I, Kyle, I, I don't know. Uh, came back and played enough, but they taped it pretty good, so I don't know if you know. Can I hang out, Brendan? You mentioned not panicking and working at that time. Did that disposition exist in the team of the year when things went sideways or did that develop in the course of these whatever? You know, I don't know if they ever went sideways. I, I think um, what you have is a more experienced team. It's, it's what everybody wants to have and very few people have it anymore. Right? So I think, um, you know, I mean, after that loss, maybe the first half of the Kansas game, we were awful. Second half, we were pretty good. and then. You know, the loss at, at uh, Louisville, I mean, we're not going to go undefeated. And the loss at Louisville, um, playing without Quaid, and then Cash is in foul trouble, maybe in foul trouble. Um, you know, we're no different than any other team. We're not, nobody's good enough to win a lot of games if you have two, three guys either out or in foul trouble. So I think you got to give credit to the maturity and, and, uh, and I think the experience. You know, the experience. Experience matters, but uh, this team's got a long way to go. You know, we we don't have a chance to make many mistakes. We don't have a shot blocker in the back. We don't have a guy that can jump up and block a shot. So uh, we still got a long ways to go, but there's progress today. This was arguably a big win, and now we get to turn around and play Purdue at home. So it's the way the league's going to be. Chris is going to have to turn around and play somebody. It's, it's going to be as gonna be tough a league as I've been in in my 24 years here. Thanks a lot.